Uh, everything we read about, about how you should die, applies most to the Prophet Sallallahu That when a person dies, either they are relieved of this world or the world is relieved from them. When Allah talks about an evil person, ma bakat alayhim was wal ard, that the heavens and the earth did not shed a tear for them. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he says that for the righteous person, the heavens cry when they die because the gate of the heavens that their deeds used to ascend from is no longer open. And their place of sajda, the earth cries, the place of sajda of prostration cries. And you think about the Prophet Sallallahu in that regard. A person that everyone longed for when he was alive and a person that everyone would grieve when he would die Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you're in Medina at that point, your entire life revolves around the Prophet Sallallahu There is not a moment that you're not thinking about what he's doing and if you can get his attention and if you can have his companionship. And at this point, it's been that way for over a decade. The day the Prophet Sallallahu came to Medina is like giving birth to a child. It brought light to the entire city. It gave new life to everyone. And there's a scene even in the Battle of Uhud, right, where it was shouted out, just suggested that Muhammad Sallallahu was killed. And people put down their swords and put down their armor and just started to cry, not feeling like they had any reason to live anymore. And that's only with being with the Prophet Sallallahu for just a couple of years. Think about it now. You're in this situation where you're sitting in the masjid and there is all of this anxiety about whether or not the Prophet Sallallahu is going to come out. And inside of yourself, you feel like he's not really going to die. You know, it's it, it's inevitable. He's a human being, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but he's not really going to die. He's going to make it out of this because he has healed so many people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many people were about to die and the Prophet Sallallahu made dua for them and they lived. He's not gonna die yet. There's still so much more to go. The story still has so much to unfold in front of our eyes. And how befitting is it that the last sight of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a smile. He's in his room, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu describes the scene. We're praying and you see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam draw his curtain and he smiles, tabassama dahikan. He smiles and he laughs, meaning you could see all of his teeth Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his face was like the page of a Mus'haf, meaning his most beautiful smile was the last smile he gave to this Ummah. When he came into Medina, Abdullah ibn Salam embraced Islam because of his smile and he's leaving Medina and he's leaving this world with a smile Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you're in Salah and you're looking at him and you're so excited because the way he's smiling, that means he must be recovering. He's gonna come back out. And the Prophet Sallallahu says, keep on praying, as if to say, keep on going. I fulfilled my mission. I did what I was supposed to do. I conveyed the message. Now you're in prayer. I'm good. I fulfilled my mission. Keep on going, not just keep on praying. And he closes the curtain Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And at that point, you're in the masjid and you just have a lot of anxiety. What's happening in his room, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is that this time it's not Aisha radiallahu anha's head in his lap. This time it's his head in her lap. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha is describing the severity of the fever of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he's saying, La ilaha illallah inna lil mawti sakarat. La ilaha illallah, verily, the closing of death, the coming of death and the last moments of this world are difficult. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the fever of the Prophet sallallahu was hotter than anything he had ever felt. And while he's in her lap, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sees her brother, Abdurrahman, and he has a siwak. And Aisha radiallahu anha knows that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi is looking at it. So Aisha radiallahu anha says, do you want me to get that for you? And the Prophet sallallahu he nods. So she gets the siwak and she chews it and she gives it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
and the Prophet ﷺ brushes his teeth for the very last time. He used to use the siwak ﷺ for every prayer, for every single salah, to prepare himself for his conversation with his Lord. And he uses that siwak and he looks up and his face lights up as Jibreel ﷺ enters into the room. And Jibreel ﷺ gives him that choice to either live with eternity in this world, as long as this world exists, or to be with the highest companion. And he chooses Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ar-Rafiq Al-A'la. He chooses the highest companion. And he continues to look up and he continues to say, rather I choose Ar-Rafiq Al-A'la, the highest companion, until Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says that the hand of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes down and his soul leaves his body Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she says that this beautiful scent filled the room immediately. You know, when the righteous soul is being taken away, the angels come with a kefan, <clears throat> with a shroud of perfume. How would it be the angels and the shroud of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that scent? And so the perfume of it filled the entire room and it was the most beautiful scent that they had ever smelled. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha cries out. At this point, as you're sitting in the masjid and you hear Aisha radiallahu anha shout and you hear, Ma ta Rasulullah, Ma ta Rasulullah, Ma ta Rasulullah, that the Prophet has died, that the Prophet has died, that the Prophet has died. And you're sitting in the masjid staring at that curtain, wondering if he's going to open it again or if this is all just a hoax or if it's like Uhud where we thought he was dead, but he wasn't really dead. We've been through things like this. He's gonna come out now. This can't be real. And every single person is looking at that curtain and looking around, and some are coming to terms with it at different points and they're crying at different points. Some are still in disbelief. You're looking around and you're seeing Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, so eloquent and Ali can't speak. You're seeing Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Uthman can't stand up. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu saying, who said that the Prophet sallallahu died? You're lying, you're lying, you're causing fitna. This is not true. Of course the Prophet sallallahu is not dead. The Prophet sallallahu is going to come out. You're a hypocrite, don't cause fitna. He couldn't come to terms with it radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And those words, ma ta Rasulullah, that the Prophet of Allah is dead. They stung every single person in the masjid. And then Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu stands up. And Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu reminds the people, whoever used to worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed dead. And whoever used to worship Allah, <clears throat> فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتِ Allah is alive and Allah is ever living. The sentiment, if you could imagine every single person in a community losing the most beloved person in the world to them and what that would do to them. If you imagine an entire community of people and everyone's child died at the same time, the most beloved person in the world to every single person in that masjid just died. And they all have to come to terms with their individual pain. And everyone has to now go to the house where they had the Prophet Sallallahu as a guest. They have to pray in the masjid with the Prophet Sallallahu no longer leading them. They have to celebrate without him. They have to, every single occasion is going to sting. SubhanAllah, that pain of losing a child. There's actually a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu says, as he's talking about the reward for the parents that put forth a child. And some of the Sahaba say, to the Prophet وسلم, Ya Rasulullah, as you're talking about this reward, what about those who have never been tested with the loss of a child? And the Prophet وسلم, said, then they have the reward of my loss because لَنْ يُصَابُوا بِمِثْلِي They won't be tested with anything harder than my death. صلوا عليه 
صلى الله عليه وسلم